sweet. Are you the one they call Howard Boom? Yes, yes, I am. I've been waiting for you. Listen, I know what they eat, where they go, and what they're talking about. I know everything. That's great, but... Last night, I heard about some secret pirate island. It's supposed to have a mountain on it that looks like a skull. I I'm not. You've got to tell General Blackthorn about it. He's desperate to know where the pirates meet. Quit rambling, man. I don't know who General Blackthorn is. And they said that... Wait. How come you don't know who General Black... Oh, you son of a whore! You're not here from England, are you? No. I'm not. Well, shit. My mistake. Looks like I'm going to have to kill you. Sorry, friend.
Christopher. I understand your collection has grown. A dozen pieces. And a most useful dozen it will be. And while we're on the subject of what will be useful... Let's keep this moving. One more thing, Christopher. I know you've been irritated with the timing of our plan. Perhaps you would like to take care of another matter at the same time? As long as it gets me, Kensington. That's precisely what I have in mind. It's so useful to have friends in high places, isn't it? You would know. Indeed. Yet some time ago I learned that, for certain tasks, the opposite is needed. Friends in low places. And you happen to have such friends, Christopher. Something in Bridgetown again? She won't help for free. Not what I had in mind. No, Christopher. Far lower than that. The lowest kind of all. The outcasts. The runaways. The ones they call the Maroons. You're certainly well informed. But if you're thinking they can be hired to fight against Kensington, that's not how they work. Everything's personal to them. Exactly. That's why it was so satisfying to learn that Kensington is no stranger among them. How's that? Did you know that, not long before your arrival, there was an attempted slave revolt at Kensington's plantation? A clan of long-escaped slaves tried to overrun the place and free Kensington's slaves in the process. They failed miserably, of course. Kensington had been warned well in advance, and they had no weapons to speak of. Many were killed. I would imagine that their kin are thirsting for vengeance. If someone were to reach out to them, someone known to them, perhaps, and inform them that an opportunity for revenge had presented itself, complete with plenty of muskets and a well-thought-out plan, do you think they might be interested? Yes. The question is where to find them. They don't tend to go around announcing their presence. But they can't always hide, either. Last time, it was Kensington's ears who overheard their plans. This time, it was mine. You know where they are? I know where they are planning to be. Some of them were talking about how they would need supplies. Apparently, they think that once the merchant's ships dock, there will be enough goods for everyone. If they're planning to raid the harbor, things may get too hot for any discussion. No one would expect you to approach them during their little operation, Christopher. But all thieves take their loot somewhere, don't they? I suppose they might be more talkative after they've succeeded. If they do succeed. Oh, I suspect they might. Especially if, at just the right moment, someone were to pacify the contingent of guards stationed at the docks. Let me guess. A friend of yours? It ought to put them in good spirits, I'd imagine. And consequently, make it easier for you to talk to them. What exactly happened with the failed slave revolt? Loose lips and Kensington's vigilant scouts. The slaves were exposed long before they ever approached the plantation. And the weapons? Kensington's men are well armed, as you know. The slaves were not. With the element of surprise, they might have stood a chance, I suppose. As it was... It was like chickens trying to invade a foxhole.
You could send one of your slaves to talk to them. They'd trust one of their own. Ah, oh, Christopher. For a moment there, I almost thought you were serious. An amusing jest, no doubt. Well, I suppose philosophically speaking, the idea of sending out a soulless creature to talk to other soulless creatures would make for an interesting exercise in debate. But realistically, one might as well send a dog, of course. You said you could provide them with weapons now? Weapons could certainly be obtained, then simply left in an unguarded location. An easy matter and quite straightforward. I only know a handful of them. They don't exactly welcome me with open arms. I'm still an outsider as far as most of them are concerned. And I would presume that, at the very least, some of the Maroons around these parts know some of your companions. This alone puts you at an advantage over everyone else. If you just need to leak the information to them, anyone could do that. Why not Ray? I believe those slaves are most distrustful of anyone they don't know. And of course, Ray does not very much care for their kind. <laughs> not unless it involves disciplining them, in any case. So if they were to hit Kensington again, you'd help them? Not personally. Heavens, no. Can you imagine me running around Kensington's place waving around a weapon? <laughs> but they certainly could count on information and intelligence, and some, shall we say, unofficial support. The dogs must be well fed before they are sent up against the boar. I'll leave you to your thoughts. How kind of you. I do so enjoy their company. Guess you need your boat repaired. Devils, you always think we are foolish savages, blind and deaf. You thought we couldn't see you following us. You are the fool! Wait, wait. 
You don't understand. I'm here to talk. You will do no talking, devil. You will scream. You know who Marcus is, don't you? I'm his friend. Blue eyes, you lie. Your man Peppy, is he here? He knows me, just tell him Christopher's. We know who you are, Snake. You came for the bounty. Instead, you will find your death. You're making a mistake. Enough from you, fork tongue. Gabo. -o. Stop this madness. Christopher, what are you doing here? What's all this fighting about? I'll do respect, Marcus, but he's a traitor. We want him dead. This is Christopher Raven we're talking about, Coffee. Be careful what you say. We have evidence. Ebo and Jojo have seen him. He's working with the Devil of Oran, Baby Ray himself. You know who I'm talking about, Ray. Back then, nobody did the slaves more harm than Baby Ray. Ebo and Jojo recognize him. Any Maroon would recognize that mark, that scar. Ray, the overseer at Orun. That's right. And he's helping Baby Ray kill people. I told you it would come to no good bringing up one of theirs. They'll stab you as soon as you turn your back. This has to be a misunderstanding. We'll get this sorted out. We just need to talk with Christopher. Christopher, will you say something already? Kofi and the others, they must be wrong, right? What are you now, Marcus? Their Inquisitor? And since when do your fellow Maroons just kill someone you know without consulting you first? Thanks for rubbing salt onto the wound. I will surely have a word about this with my fellow Maroons later. But it is a serious charge that are leveling against you. Do you have anything to say? Maybe they're right. I'm sick of sharing in that never-ending Maroon rage. Not being one myself. Kofi, please let us talk in private for a moment. What is this really about, Chris? Does this have something to do with your pursuit of Neville? So you believe he's returned after all? Look, Marcus, I came here because I need the Maroons' help. Doesn't look like they're in the mood to help you. Quite the opposite, in fact. We can help each other. Listen, I know you and your people tried to take Kensington's plantation and failed, but Kensington is more than just a plantation owner. He's more than his little political career, too. Marcus, Kensington is Neville's right-hand man. Your people's interests and mine are the same. If I can convince them to attack Kensington's plantation again, I can get them the weapons we need to take it down. I get Kensington, they free the slaves, everyone wins. And forget Ray, he's just a means to an end. The Maroons can have him when it's over. Neville's right hand, eh? I don't know, Chris. That plantation was well guarded, and we lost a lot of men, and the Maroons aren't going to cooperate with Ray. Ray is working for a man named Avery now, and Avery is the key to the whole plan. Avery wants Kensington to lose, and he's willing to throw his whole weight into this. Weapons, supplies, whatever we need. I don't trust either one of them, believe me, but I need them for this. Talk with Kofi then. 
Maybe you can convince him. He is still furious over how many men were lost when the last attack failed. Everything else aside, Chris, it is good to see you. Same with you, Marcus. Coffee, I came here to speak to you about your people. I've got a plan that can help us both, us and your people. You and your slaver have a plan, do you? I heard it didn't go too well at Kensington's plantation. What's that got to do with anything? You have unfinished business there, and I can help you finish it. Since when do you care about the Maroons fight, eh? I don't. I have my own reasons. But if you help me, you'll all get what you want, too. At least that was honest. All right. Tell me about this plan of yours. I'm working with a powerful enemy of Kensington, who hates him almost as much as you do. He's ready to supply your people with weapons if you agree to raid his plantation again. They want him killed? Not right away. It's complicated. For you, the most important thing is that you'll be able to free slaves. But don't worry. I'll make sure Kensington dies. I guarantee it. And this goes for Ray, too. I could give a fuck what happens to Ray, Coffee. Hmm. And you would be with us during this attack? Yes. I tell you what, white man. My people will cooperate, but we require a blood sacrifice first. And we want you to partake in it. Something your new friend would not be happy to know about. I want to make sure you are not going to cheat us. Kofi, the devils are coming. They found us. You. This bastard must have brought them here. Did you... Is that your game? Let's get ready to welcome them instead of wasting time. Let me kill him now, Kofi. He's a snake. I promised him a chance, Shaka. Now we fight. I'll be watching him. And if I have any doubts, I'll kill him myself. This is madness. I have decided. Shaka, now get everyone ready. I'll let you decide whose side I'm on. I will. Remember, I'm watching you. You're better off watching yourself in a fight. I have more than one pair of eyes. You still doubt me? I doubt most men. Sometimes I find cause to doubt one of them less than before. Guess that's as much as I'm going to get right now. Meet me at the beach. We'll talk alone.
here. We can talk. What do you mean, blood sacrifice? You are right about one thing. I want to give those Kensington slaves their freedom. And for this goal, I would ride with the devil himself. However, you follow your own secret ways, and our people do not trust you. We want Ray delivered to us. He is a slaver, and he must pay for his sins. We do not trust you, but we are hungry for revenge as well. We're just going to use Ray until he's served his purpose, and I'm not going to let Kensington live. I can promise you that. He and I have a history. You can trust me on that. We want a show of your intentions, a rite of blood sacrifice for the Gedi. If we cannot have Ray now, so be it. But there is someone close to Ray. His mind is that of a child, but he is much more dangerous. He likes to play with people, and Ray, he has given him plenty of toys to play with. Mainly our women and our children. There's someone Ray cares about? Even the worst men have friends. Ray's his name solely. What's making you celebrate these old rites here today? You're a long way from the land of your ancestors. <laughs> White man, maybe your gods leave you just because you cross the sea, but our Lua always, always with us. Urzuli has protected us, but the Gede are restless. They demand blood. So are we agreed? Fine. What do I need to do for your right? Ray keeps solely nearby. Since the simpleton is not bright enough to look after himself, go find him and lure him outside. Then bring him to Reaper's Point. I would think those slave companions of yours are unlikely to postpone their harbor raid just to await your arrival, Christopher.
you. You come see Sully? Ray sent me, Sully. Sully know you. Sully seen you with Ray. You Ray's new friend. Why Ray don't come? Uh, Ray don't like Sally no more. He's busy, uh, preparing a nice surprise for you. You know, the kind you like. Oh, <laughs> little surprise for Sally. Don't you want to know more? Don't want? Uh, no, Sally won't. You, you, you tell. Ray wants you to go to a special place and wait for him there. For surprise? Don't tell him I told you, but yes, you'll like it, I'm sure. Sully, leave now. As fast as you can, Sully boy. <laughs> Sully ready. And? I brought Sully. He's all yours. Good. We will take care of the rest. And our deal? Now you can stand together with the Maroons. My people are with you. As soon as they finish with the Devil's little brother. Wait. Sully? He's Ray's brother? Yes. They are the spawn of one man and two different rapes, Big Devil and Little Devil. Are you surprised? You, you don't look surprised. That's enough out of you. Time to die. What? Get him! Bobby! Still want to kill me? Not now, but I will later. Give it your best shot. Oh, Dad, you have my word. Christopher, finally. I was concerned for your safety. 
one never knows with those savages. I take it everything went well? It did. They're eager to have another go at Kensington. They'd do it tomorrow if we're ready. Ha <laughs> Impatience. It seems that you and the savages have something in common. I am speaking in jest, of course. One would never imply that a Christian shared any traits with their ilk. They do sustain themselves by stealing, don't they? Robbing ships and innocent people? Among other things. I wonder if the itineraries of a handful of ships belonging to Kensington and of his trading partners outside the West Indies would be of any use to them. I'm sure it would. Idle curiosity. You see, a document of the kind just happens to have fallen in my hands recently. I've no real use for it. I thought of archiving it, but I've positively no place to put it. Perhaps you could keep it instead, Christopher. Don't tell me. A gift from a recent clerk friend of yours. I'll take it. The Maroons will be glad to know what to hit. Oh, I need not know the details, Christopher. I'm sure you'll put it to good use, and that is all I need to know. Incidentally, you look a little tired. Wouldn't you like a moment's rest? When I'm done. So much vigor. I envy you sometimes. I too am a man of simple needs and modest tastes, but my life keeps me less uh, passionately animated. What is the secret of your vitality, I wonder? Revenge sustains me. How interesting. I believe I shall stick with wine then. It's gentle on the stomach and gladdens the heart. Where do we go from here? Your visits are truly enjoyable to me, Christopher. I'm glad someone's enjoying them. How much longer is this going to take? We are entering the final stages of our plan, where just a while ago Kensington was a robust tree with deep roots. Together we have been able to reduce him to a diseased and unstable trunk, ready to fall at any moment. He's still trying to reach out, desperate for support now, but in fact, only one of the patriarchs still firmly stands behind him no doubt due to his long-standing friendship with Kensington. Others have been quite approachable. Their disappointment with Kensington has been growing. So the patriarch that supports him, he's the target? He certainly expects to be. He has received some information from several highly trusted men, I might add, about an upcoming rebellion on his grounds. I understand he is quite alarmed. So alarmed, in fact, he's reached out to his good friend, asking him for supplies and extra men to help guard the grounds and quell said rebellion. Kensington. Indeed, Christopher. Of course, Kensington, always the liar, plays the role of the concerned friend. As soon as he heard of the man's worries, he immediately launched a ship full of battle-hardened men, the two-faced snake acting as if he cared for friendship rather than his own gain, but sadly, the ship will only reach one destination, and it isn't the one he intends. Let me guess. The bottom of the sea. Exactly! And you'll be its guide. Nobody likes a man who breaks promises, especially those made by close friends. I am afraid Kensington's last ally will soon see why the other patriarchs shun him. And the rebellion will succeed. I need to let the Maroons know about this. Oh, they must. They will be a crucial piece of our little rebellion. But the rebellion will not be where Kensington expects it. It's too bad Kensington has sent so many of his men away, leaving his property vulnerable. So this rebellion... Will take place on Kensington's grounds, yes. Our plan is almost finished. Alert your maroon companions. As soon as you return from the sea, the attack will commence. 
By then, everything will be in place. The Maroons will have all the weapons they need. All right. First the ship, then the rebellion. Even the words themselves, so promising, we're just a step away from the final goal. Speak for yourself. My goal is still far away. You better be ready to help me achieve mine. Of course, Christopher. I haven't promised you just Kensington, have I? Have faith in me. With the Lord on my side, we will always have what we desire. Place the sails! Right away! Enemy fire in hell! Move it! Move it! Get off!
guess you need your boat. Another tragedy at sea. For Kensington. By now he must be feeling a bit like Job. But unlike Job, God will not be there to eventually show him mercy. Ah, well, such is life for the unjust. Right. Are the weapons for the Maroons ready? Indeed they are. However, there is another thing we must first take care of. We agreed we'd start as soon as I got back. Here I am. No more games, no more waiting. We move now. Nothing has changed regarding the rebellion. While you were at sea, I've learned from our new friend that there is quite the opportunity for us to take advantage of. It is an opportunity best not missed, and it will mean a day's postponement at worst. So what is it? The royal court asked to see Kensington? Patience, Christopher, patience. The patriarch ally of Kensington's has asked him for another favor. Besides the men and supplies, of course. What? Another damn ship? Better. Anticipating the rebellion, the patriarch has sent his son away from the plantation until it is safe for him to return. He's asked his trusted friend Kensington to accommodate the youngster. Kensington agreed, of course, and promptly installed the man's offspring in a remote location almost no one knows about. Almost no one. And your point is? I'm told the Patriarch is as attached to his son as Abraham was to Isaac. Imagine his grief if the young man were to meet the fate that was supposed to be Isaac's. Imagine his fury at the friend who has failed to protect his son. How many ways are we going to do Kensington in? The Maroons are ready to hit this plantation right now. And by next sundown, they will. And with Kensington's last friend gone, no one will lift a finger to do anything about it. He'll already be plenty pissed at Kensington when the ship full of men don't arrive. But that will pass. Remember, there will be no rebellion at his plantation. Such anger will evaporate quickly. But this, if his son, whom he trusted to Kensington, were to shuffle off this mortal coil, can you imagine why his hatred of Kensington would likely surpass even yours, Christopher? I'm getting very tired of your twists and changes. I understand your fervor, but what's one more day, Christopher, when we can drive the final nail into Kensington's coffin so deeply that he will never get out? All right, but this is the last time. Delay again, and I'll move without you. Splendid, Christopher. Of course, I need not remind you of the gravity of the task. This time, it is not about a low life in an alley or a corrupt clerk. Discretion is paramount. Ray will accompany you, of course. I know what's at stake. You just make sure everything's ready when I'm done. I give you my word, Christopher. We will move on Kensington as soon as this is done. This final step will ensure his downfall.